In this video, we're going to be breaking down Fancy versus Abram. This is the MCS Ultimate Kickoff Challenge, I believe, and this is the finals. And Fancy actually is uh, is going to be running a defense that really nobody expected. At this point in the Madden season, the meta has pretty much predominantly been the Colts offensive ebook and the and the double mug defense. Now, Abram is going to actually be, I believe, in the Cardinals offensive ebook, utilizing some cheap motion plays in the bunch strong offset formation. And he is also going to be in the double mug meta on defense. Now, that being said, uh, Fancy is going to be, actually, I think was running a lot of double mug at the beginning of the year, but he is going to be in the Colts offensive playbook. He's still going to have access to the double mug. I believe he's in the Texans defensive playbook. But if he, he is going to be running a lot more more dime three two or dollar three two and we're gonna be talking about his defense and kind of how he sees the game so uh, first out first off real quick just want to do a little quick breakdown here we've got fancy on offense to start out and we have abram on defense as i said he's going to be in this double mug defense and from what we saw from Abram, at least in his matchup against Showtime, and I think we're going to see it again, is Abram is running a lot of man-to-man. -man. So he's going to run man over here, he's going to man over here, and then utilizing the safety to either cross man to the tight end uh, with maybe like a flat zone lurking on this guy. Um, this guy right here is going to oftentimes be manned up. I'm pretty sure um, this actually defense kind of makes a lot of sense to me, like a deep half here. A man up here, a man up here, a cross man onto the tight end, maybe like a little hard flat, and then this nickel corner always traveling and manning here. And what this allows him to do, because of the fact that this di this double mug is such a good four man blitz, they're gonna you're gonna see a lot of blocked running back, which allows him to just use her here, and it's actually a really really effective way to play defense. So you're gonna probably see a lot of man coverage from Abram. Fancy is in the Colts playbook couple cards here that is kind of worth noting at this point in the year worthy is faster than everybody on the field harrison maserati marv is got wide receiver apprentice vernon davis here is uh really effective as well i believe he's the best tight end in the game at this point so anyway a couple things uh just to note but let's go ahead and get back into the plays and kind of see what fancy is going to be rocking so again real quick here you kind of see it right off rip now abram it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a mix between man coverage and then one of the more popular coverages against bunch this year is a roll coverage where we have like a little soft squat here. This guy might be manned up to the tight end, and then this guy might be manned up to the slot. So this would allow if essentially if the running back doesn't go on a flat route, he can just switch stick either to this middle third or user this linebacker himself. So we'll go ahead and see kind of what the shell actually ends up being here so we can kind of talk about it. So he actually turns into this defender and users him. And as we look at this, you see we got coverage here on this right side. We have this guy here. We have this uh, little flat zone. And then we have that third. So kind of a, a cover three base defensive shell here. And Fancy does have this cross. We're going to try to kind of fit that in. Nice little click on to be able to catch it. Gets out. And is he going to get a touchdown on the first play? It's all the way down to the 10-yard line. So one of the other big things that you always want to look for when you're watching these games is it's not just what blitz are, what's the meta that they're running. It's why are they running it? Why are they using it? What makes that meta good as well as what are they doing situationally in the red zone? You're really looking for things like what's their blitz? What's their pass protection? What's their red zone setups? Those are different things that really help you kind of learn a lot about the game right there. Kind of just honestly a bad throw by Lawrence. He actually had a wide open touchdown uh, to that in route. It's a really good red zone combo that he actually dialed up there. Fancy is one of the best passers in the world he's been one of the best passers in the world since madden 20 uh potentially even madden 19 but i, I first kind of saw him play in madden 20 there you see and this is why people are running this double mug defense you'll see here fancy's going to block a running back and look at this this is going to be a send for a send four um notice this little bluff blitz here could potentially help this blitz come in better but what you're seeing is this running back just completely ignores this a gap blitzer and this a gap blitzer screams in and is able to get a big sack and that's going to put him in third night team and these situations are so important because if you can hold your opponent to field goals in this game it's a very offensive game at this point if you can hold your opponent just to field goals that's considered basically a stop and just in terms of how it's going to actually affect the overarching game 
So here kind of situationally, a tough, tough down and distance for Fancy, has that seam streak and just gets absolutely yelled at there uh, by mid blitz. And you see the pressure of mid blitz. So essentially what we're talking about in terms of why these two defenses are as good as they are is because mid blitz is going to have probably the best blitzing pressure. You're going to get the most consistent A-gap blitzes. You're going to get the best pressure you could possibly get utilizing that defense. It's the toughest defense to consistently block because most of the pass protections are honestly random and they aren't that effective. That being said, Fancy is going to be in Dollar, whereas Dollar does not have the best blitz in the game. It still has the threat of pressure. It still has pressure, but it doesn't have the best blitz in the game. It has the best coverage in the game. So we kind of have two different defenses that you would use for two different reasons. And we're going to see what Fancy is doing out of this Dollar and super excited to break this down. Hadn't really seen this um, done this well at this scale, winning a belt, beating the best players in the world, able to do this with this defense is going to be, you know, kind of significant, I think, for the for the future of Madden. This could put very well be a, a potential turning point for how to play defense in Madden in light of the switch stick. But Fancy's defense is basically entirely centered around coverage and switch sticking. And then he is going to send pressure occasionally, but really it's not going to be the main feature of his defense. His main feature of his defense is going to be switch stick. So let's just talk about this real briefly here. Fancy is in uh, Dime 3-2. We have an ebook on both Double Mug and Dime 3-2 in our school community. If you're not a member of the school community, it's a great place to get better at the game. We have full offensive and defensive ebooks to help you get better at the game, and we drop tons of updates to them. We're going to be updating um, our defenses as well with the most recent patch. So make sure that you're in the school community. It's only 10 bucks. You get access to all of our college football and our Madden offensive and defensive ebooks where we really go in depth and break down how to do some of the stuff you're seeing on your screen as well as how to adjust and adapt it based off whatever formation you're going to play so that being said here what we have is the double safety blitz so normally these dollar safeties they're back here and normally the corners like in a base press they're gonna be up here right and this has kind of been the traditional way to run dollar well last year des um, actually started using a double safety defense where he would come out and double safety blitz Dollar who would be base aligned with his auto flip off and he would come out in this double safety blitz and this would bring these safeties down. And when he would audible to a play, they would basically stay in these positions and then these guys would stay there as well. So essentially you come out in double safety blitz, you audible to whatever play that you want to audible to. And in your coaching adjustments, I would make sure that your auto alignment is set to base and your auto alignment is um, set auto flip is set to off and that's going to help kind of make sure everything is symmetrical everything stays the same and the reason this is most effective out of dollar is because everything will look the same because it is a symmetrical formation that being said the primary blitz threats here are going to be these slot corners coming off of the edge as you see here in a db fire 2 situation or a free safety zone blitz where we try to kind of bring this guy through the A-gap and potentially could send this safety as well. So those are kind of the main blitz threats. The blitzes are not as good as in mid-blitz. But once you're in, you're going to see a couple of the weaknesses of dollar. The biggest weakness is the blitz is not as good as a mid-blitz. And the second biggest weakness is the run defense obviously is not as good just because of where your three-down linemen and um, three down linemen versus a four down lineman, it's harder to get gap shoots in that in that regard, unless you're in a bear front. So Abram going to be starting out in bunch strong, little whip route to Maserati Marv. That whip route, and that's why a lot of people are using that Marvin Harrison Maserati. You cannot get whip routes unless you have wide receiver apprentice or Hara Master Maserati Marv. When he's lit up, he does have that wide receiver apprentice activated. There you see a little run play in the duo, and. We'll kind of see how this drive develops, but you're going to see fancy once Abram starts passing. It's really going to you're going to really see some cool stuff defensively what he's doing. And I, I thought this was probably I think the most competitive game in the tournament and one of the best games to break down. Um, so you see how these safeties are down in the box, and let's just take a look at his coverage just real quick. So here this is a right hash. So we see him send this free safety zone blitz. So his blitz is basically. One, two, three, four. So that means we have seven people in coverage with our user kind of probably in a hook curl right in here. Okay. 
Um, so what you're going to see is we're going to roll the cover. So we're going to flat. We have an outside quarter, an inside quarter. This is going to help with seam streaks. And then we have a deep half. That's going to help prevent one play touchdowns. A soft squat and a vert hook right in here. Now our user is coming over here into this space. And you're going to start to see the switch stick. So based off the combo, right, there's this crosser that's going to potentially get open. And really this tight end route could potentially get open. So you're going to see watch Fancy's user. So you see here, he's kind of sitting on this drag, and he's, he's going to switch stick to this guy or this guy to try to take this crosser away. Oh, let's see. It should be this guy right here. See, there's the switch stick. Now he's switching here to take this away, and look at this guy taking that drag underneath. Everything's bagged up, and that is really good defense. Fancy structures his defense in a way that encourages his switch sticking. This is a very important principle for how defense is going to be played probably for the rest of the future of Madden now that this feature is in the game. Here we go. Probably another free safety zone blitz setup. And you see another free safety zone blitz setup. Now this time, if you look at this play right here, I'm pretty sure that's a that's a bluff blitz. Um, but it could it could be something else. But but in general here, this might actually be man up on the tight end probably because he was expecting verticals. But you got that purple going. He's probably protecting the sticks here. And look, this is almost like cover three cloud, right, essentially, in terms of how it's going to pl practically play. It's almost like a cover three cloud type of look. And then you have this man up here or vert hook, and these are all playing the sticks. So, again, we're only seeing pressure with four. Now, Abram does a really good job. He got a clean pocket blitz is picked up but in this game if you send four people you will shed as you see you get the shed you get the sack fumble and now fancy is in complete control of this game because you don't need a ton of stops to win if you only get one or two stops a game that is plenty to win in this year's game just because of how powerful offense is and so you see you see fancy end up getting the stop goes to stock flood here got the out route nice switch stick by abram to take that away and he's just going to have to throw it away. I think Fancy was just trying to quick hike, try to get that out route in. But, guys, I, I, I just I, I really want to encourage you to watch through this game. One of the big things you're going to see from Fancy again and again and again and again is sending four. Sending four in this game, You if you don't get the blitz in and there, everything was open. You had the streak route, the post route. Abram switched it, just couldn't get there, and Fancy's up two possessions, and this is a big deal. This is a big deal of the game, especially because Abram gets ball at half. Now, Abram, the fact that Abram gets ball at half means that he's not really out of this game by any means. Whenever you get the ball at halftime, you're almost never out of a game just because if you score at half and then score coming out of half, that really it, it really swings the game well. So you see here, there's that three-rack hook. The game is kind of showing us the play art there. And we're going to see kind of what he gets into. But I'm almost positive this is free safety zone blitz. So look at where his user's standing. His user, because they're in the middle of the field, the user's going to stand a little bit more to the middle to try to pull. But this is 100% a shed defense, what he's about to do here. This is really not a blitz threat. This is a shed defense. And so the reason it's a shed defense is, as I said, if you send four, these four will shed, especially this nose tackle right here. He's going to shed. So you're going to see... Watch this in four. So we see get picked up. Now watch as this kind of develops here. We've got cover three, cover three, cover three, flat, flat. And then this appears to be some type of cross man, uh, probably on the square receiver. And you see at this point, even though even though the blitz didn't come in, the sheds are starting to occur. And the only thing he can throw is this quick flat to the running back. So you're going to start to see that I think the way that this game is going to be played is these sin four sheds with really good quick um it's not always going to be a shed sometimes it will come in but really good switch sticking and the send four is going to be a kind of a critical piece of defense now we'll see another underrated component of what fancy is doing i'm going to talk about it in a second i love this route combo from dig return using that speed out right there it's got that whip route see that switch stick right onto it that should have been a pick just a, a little late getting there but that 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 it's just great route recognition. And what Fancy's doing is he's trying to read the field defensively as the play is going on so he can identify who he wants to switch stick to. Now, you see, look at this user all the way over here. Now, 
him using it on the left here, and this is his first seam streak of the game. So the whole point of bringing these safeties into the box is to try to prevent this throw, this throw, or this throw. Any kind of, or if this receiver was like, let's say he was here, trying to prevent that throw. We're trying to force throws. We, what we don't want the ball to be thrown, honestly, is we don't want the ball to be thrown in these seams of the field because they're super hard to defend and they're big chunk plays. Okay? That's the whole purpose of bringing these guys down to the box. Okay? Whole purpose. Because now they can, you know, just a simple safety, he's going to flow right into the seam. Here, you're going to see that this is the first time, I believe, so far that Fancy sends a DB fire two blitz where he's trying to send five. He normally is going to send four. Okay, but here he sends five. Now DB fire two, you're going to see here we get, I believe this is almost a roll coverage. This guy's rolling in the middle of third. This guy's rolling here. And you just see how lethal these seam streaks are. That's just a great read from Abram. And he's able to just kind of fit that ball into a tight window. All right, so good read from Abram. And you just see, I mean, there's just so much that we can break down from what Fancy is doing defensively. There's free safety zone blitz, and that's what can happen with free safety zone blitz right there. So free safety zone blitz is kind of similar to mid blitz. Uh, not as, not as like, in situation, it can, be, it can be super good. So what you'll see here is, is, yes, Abram blocks a running back. But look, this comes straight in, and the running back picks him up so late. This is what's super important. Running back picks him up so late. Now, Fancy is using contains. This is what this is another reason this is really good compared to mid blitz because now if I use contains, like the big key to beating mid blitz, you just roll out either side, right? Now I can't really roll out because I got the contains. You're going to force me to stand here and deal with this uncomfortable pressure that you are sending. Covered shell from this point, I believe, is just a basic cover for a drop in this situation. Quarter, 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 looks like it could be a. I might know. No, I actually don't think that is what it is doing. I think he's consistently rolling his coverage. So this time we got the half over here. This is probably a soft squat. This might be a hard flat. And you're going to see Abram actually fit the ball, I mean, in a very tight pocket and uh, able to get a big play there. Really good. And you're seeing Abram has great reads, great offense, truly one of the best players in the world. I think at this point in the year he's he hasn't won a belt, but he's made both live events. And he is, um, he's made both live events. And in his first one, I believe he made a final four or final eight. I, 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 it might have been a final eight, but I want to say it was a final four. But I do think it might have been a final eight. And then this one, he's made a final four. So Abram has really, uh, really done a good job. And he won, won about last year. Like this guy's been one of the best players in the world um, for the last, you know, 12, 12 months at least. And you're seeing that he's struggling offensively, right? Everything is a tight window. It's a good read. And you're just going to, I mean, you're going to see how this kind of plays out. Now, Astro, who's considered to be one of the best offensive players in the world uh, every single year, pretty much top five offensive player in the world every single year, we're gonna, we are going to be breaking that game down. Fancy just absolutely bagged him. Like, I mean, it was, it was insane how well Fancy played defensively in that game. Here we go, free safety zone blitz. There you see the, you see the power of the seam streaks, guys. Like, even though Fancy's doing a lot of stuff to stop the seam streaks, he is still susceptible to seam streaks. That's how good the seam streaks are, right? So, obviously, with mid blitz, what the challenge is, is it's really challenging to defend the seams because of where you have to use her within the defense and because of kind of if you take the seams away in that defense – then you've got a lot of stuff open uh, in terms of the sidelines. So that's where Dollar, you're starting to see. Now here, red zone situation, notice what Fancy does. He decides he's going to jump into mid-blitz here, right? Situationally, you know, not as much uh, field to cover, and so mid-blitz might be a little bit better as a, as in, a, in, a, in a pinch like that. Abram able to run right on it, and he's going to get a touchdown. So this is a, that was a huge drive from Abram, you know, just kind of a fight. You know, stay not stay alive drive, but an answer drive. That was an answer uh, to what Fancy was doing. We're going to see how they kind of adjust as we go throughout this game. So here's mid blitz again, and there's a running back wide open. We'll see, going to wait on him to kind of fully commit. And 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 I believe, yeah, Fancy is in Colts. 
Colts playbook. So always can learn some stuff. I do believe Colts is the best playbook. We've got a full ebook on that in our school community. We do have a Bears ebook, which is kind of some of this bunch strong stuff as well. I gotta take a really hard look at Cardinals, see if I want to do something on that as well on the site. It does look pretty pretty decent. We have a little high low read here to the right side. The C route, almost a D line pick, very, very easily. And this is this is truly why people run double mug. The pressure is so effective. If you can cover for two, three seconds, um, you know, there's just it, the pressure is, is very, very effective. Kind of a key situation. Third one might see a send six here. Once you start doing these slide protections, the send six, the, the, once they start to slide protect to try to block your send four out of mid blitz, the send five and the send six is really effective. You start to really mess up a lot of their blocking principles, and you'll just start having people completely walk in. So, all right, I'll flip here. I wonder, you see how slow that slot corner is when he flips? That's kind of a kind of interesting there he gets absolutely screamed at but again you just see like these quick reads and there if you if you notice where fancy is going to attack a lot in this game i believe it's going to be these high lows in the middle of the field it's this drag post drags uh dig route combos seam streaks a lot of middle of the field combos and that's where dollar kind of can take that away there you see there there's that send five send six just kills him but the rollout and he's able to get out one of the things I think would be interesting is if you sent six with contains. I don't know if that would help that rollout or not. It's going to go to tight open here. Good combo. And there you see the weakness of double mug. So here we get the blitz blocked up, and it's just so hard to defend. Look at this area of the field. Look how open this is. This is so hard to defend. The crazy part is this is also open. Um, you know, and this is, these are shaded down yellows. Why is he shading down these yellows? Because he's got to stop these underneath little drag routes. And the problem is they just – you're not aligned properly in this defense to be able to defend consistently seam streaks in zone coverage. In man coverage, you can defend seam streaks, but if you play too much man coverage, then we're just going to get killed with those crossers underneath. So that's a big touchdown from Fancy. Now, situationally, um, he did leave Abram with kind of a perfect scenario uh, where Abram could clock this half and go into half, either 10-17 or 14-17. to So we'll kind of see how Abram plays this situation. This is really, again, you know, kind of the key of getting the ball at that. Here's DB Fire. This was a send four out of DB Fire. And there you see that seam string right there. Very close. It's actually a great catch by Vernon Davis. Um, defensively, honestly, Fancy's got a fairly, you know, obviously frustrated he didn't catch the pick or, or get a KO, but probably, honestly, fairly okay with playing defense like that. Nice read there. And you're starting to see Abram is starting to figure this out. He's starting to understand he has time in the pocket to make reads. He's starting to he's starting to put more pressure on Fancy to do more defensively. So we're gonna see kind of how Fancy responds to this. There's a send four, almost a lurk there. Um, but honestly, this looks like a really clean drive from Abram. Now Abram's not really clocking yet, uh, which is kind of interesting. I don't know. Maybe Abram just doesn't clock. I don't see him clock a ton. We'll see. There's that seam streak play. Look at that. Ooh. Okay. Good touchdown from Abram there. That was honestly almost like a busted coverage from from Fancy. But you see, yeah, there's just nobody. And that's the problem is when you put this guy in the middle third, the problem is if there's not a half over here, this seam is so open. I mean, here, look, I, I don't know if he just messed up, messed up an adjustment on this guy or put this guy in a half or what, but this – this has to be a half because Fancy's trying to click on and you see like now, now, right here, this looks like a pick. It's not because Abram high points it. High point passing, super important as well to kind of get the ball more, you know, and get, basically helps with those tight window throws, gets the ball out in front of the receiver more. And so that's, you know, that's a big deal. All right, so Fancy. Now, Fancy is going to try to clock here. Starts out with a run. 
kind of a standard clock situation from Fancy. And honestly, the way this half has kind of been going, you're starting to see Abrams starting to starting to play a lot better offensively. He really is. We'll see kind of how this plays out. Kind of an interesting combo here. Motion out streak. I don't know what this hitch is for. Drag. Read. And I'll tell you what, man. The more you watch these games, the more you realize Vernon Davis is just unbelievably effective. Breaks tackles fast. Can juke, spin, jurtle, <laughs> or hurdle. All right. Uh, Two-minute warning. Probably a run here. You got the clock ticking. And so the whole idea here is Fancy's trying to score really with no time on the clock and use halftime as another way to get a stop. It's these clock management. Clock management is so important in Madden 25. Given how powerful the offense is, how easy it is to get down the field quick to get a field goal or something like that, you really need to make sure you're 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 really paying attention to this clock. Is that drag underneath? Good read. Eh. Probably a little late on that drag. I think that drag was there. And you'll notice one of the things that I've noticed in Madden, and I think this is actually applies to the real NFL as well. When you start to see them hesitate with their reads, they're not crisp, they're not sharp. That's where you start to see a lot of issues. There's R1. Good read goes down. Now, this also uh, clock management applies to kind of what Abram is going to be doing defensively. Abram is going to start to play more aggressive to try to get the ball back as well. Because, again, if he gets – even if Fancy gets seven, if Abram's able to go down and get three or seven, very significant in terms of the overarching outcome of the game. So both of these guys are really trying to basically be the last person to score – at half. So we're going to look at that streak. That streak there. Ooh. And that was the, that was that high ball, that free form high point. And I think he got a red, maybe just because of under pressure. I'm not sure. But I think when Fearless comes into the game, it's going to really make offense a lot better. You're not going to get some of these fluky overthrows and stuff. And there's Vernon. I'm telling you, if you take your drag routes, these drag routes are super just Zeus. They're, they're so good. Forcing them to have to defend drags. Here's that trips tight end combo. Uh, he's doing it out of trips tight end flex. Probably blocked the running back. I love this combo. Look at this seam streak. Seam streak flat. We have this high low. High points to seam streak. Able to catch the seam streak now. Again, situationally, both of these guys, in my opinion, my opinion, they they didn't really. I mean, look at this how this clock was managed. I just feel like it could be a potential of just like Abrams playing such aggressive defense. Fancy had the touchdown; he figured he'd take it. Now, situationally, forty seconds, you're more like you're less likely to give up a touchdown than you are a field goal. And if Fancy gives up a field goal, that's not the end of the world because he's still in control of the game. If he were to do that. So that could be why he's doing that. I just kind of feel like I didn't see a ton of emphasis on clock management in that in that down and distance. I you know I don't know could 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 be wrong. Wow. So right there, that was Abram kind of staring down the street trying to make a big play. I feel like he honestly just was anticipating Fancy to switch stick from the streak, and you're gonna to start to see this back and forth, but. This this anticipation of the switch stick, he then has that streak there, and he's, he's you know you see see how he's kind of learning that, and he's basically what what Abram's trying to do is he's trying to lure Fancy to switch stick onto one of his posts or crossers and hit a fa hit a streak over the top for a touchdown. Now we did that two times in a row, probably you know probably situationally again we got to get down to field goal range too, so crosser that's that's not open that's not open, so. And you'll see, I mean, when these guys start hesitating more offensively with their passing, that's how you start to see, like, the effect of switch stick, the effect of, of the defensive player. 
We're going to go to bunch flex. He loves this bunch flex. It's probably going to be that out route, corner route combo. Um, let's see if he uses that speed out. I don't think he is going to use that speed out. I love the speed out right here, like right in this little pocket. He's going to use a speed in. Straight corner, in route, corner route, nothing there. Fourth and ten, that's a huge stop. Absolute, absolute huge stop. So, honestly, I just feel like that was just a bad, a couple of consecutive over-aggressive play calls from Abram because, because it put him in that fourth and ten. Fourth, I will say, with as good as offense is, fourth and ten, fourth and fifteen, with how powerful the switch stick is, Honestly, fairly hard to convert. You know, no matter what year of Madden you're playing, there's that corner route, great free form. That's got to be a touchdown. That's got to be a touchdown. And and 24-14, potentially, you know, 27 or 31-14 is a lot different than 24-21 or 24-17 even. So, like a huge stop in terms of the, how this game is going to play. Nice scramble. Get down. Timeout. But the, the stop was absolutely monumentally huge. All right, so third and three. Now, if you're fancy, you're kind of trying to score right here. He loves his trips pretty much every time. Every time he's in a red zone, and this is another reason why audibly and around is really good. So he starts bunch right. Look at this slot corner. This is another reason why dollar is good because you never have to deal with this. The slot corner is not flipping for whatever reason. Maybe Abram doesn't want him to flip, but he's not flipping him. So now look at this. You have four people over two, and you have two people over three, right? This is super good. And then, again, the combo has basically been this – this combo i like honestly what if i was fancy what i would do here is a stemmed in route gonna go over here i would do a streak and then i personally like a drag and a in and the reason why i like that is because it really high lows that backside i don't feel like this flat does a whole lot for you um it does open up some some windows but uh i don't feel like the flat's that big of a deal let me see the combo here Yep, flat. He's using a running back wheel. I wouldn't have used that running back wheel. Throw right at him. I thought he caught that. All right, fourth and three. Obviously, you take your three here. I thought he caught that. That looks like he catches it. No, there you see the knockout. Okay. So there you go. That's going to pretty much be the first half. We see Abram's going to basically have one play. Kind of see what he does. And you see, look at the sheds. Look how fast the, 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 this defense does shed. But Abram does get ball, so this is a key drive. This is, it's, it's kind of a stay alive drive. Like if you don't, if you don't get seven on this drive, the game's probably over. Honestly, uh, just once you get to a three possession game, that's where the Madden games, in my opinion, start to kind of get out of reach. Drag trail con trail concept there, love that. Let's kind of see. Okay. First down and 10. I'm watching Fancy, trying to see if you're going to send four or send five. I think you're going to see some fours. He didn't really like the send five. The send five hasn't really been good, honestly. It's been these send fours. And the send fours aren't even there. If you watch the blitzes, they're, if you watch the different, like if you look at the defenses, Abrams' blitzes are so much better than Fancy's. But fan, in the, except in that situation, but Abrams' blitzes are so much better than Fancy's blitzes. But Fancy's defense is shedding just enough. It's just enough pressure that they have to they have to either set up pass protection or they have to feel it. Now here he does go to a first time I think all game we've seen this look, and I would assume it's because he wants to send. No, he doesn't. I'm not sure why he did that. And that's what Abram has been waiting for right there. That's, this is what Abram has been baiting for the last two drives. And Fancy finally kind of takes the bait here. Situationally, I just feel like it's a bad switch stick. Because I would switch stick here. I'm not sure why he didn't do that. Or even here. But Fancy, he might have been trying to. Yeah, just see how he switch sticks. And when he switch sticks, he comes straight down. Showtime does this as well. They do this a lot. So what Abram does is he's anticipating the switch stick onto the trail route, 
and that's where the streak if he switch sticks and moves him straight down the streak automatically beats him and so now abram counters the switch stick as you see there with a touchdown one point touchdown and that is kind of the risk reward of switch stick obviously the risk or the rewards outweigh the risk especially if you could switch it strategically based off of the combo. I don't feel like fancy really, you know, I'm, I'm just not sure why he, why he chose to switch it onto him. Obviously in the flow of the game, you know, maybe, maybe not anticipating Abram to put a streak there, but that was a huge play. That was a huge kind of play for Abram to kind of, kind of clap back a little bit of fancy at this point and, and get some stuff. And, and you see here, I mean, look at the, watch this, watch this play. 1,001, 1,002, there's no routes can develop with that. He just gets screamed at by Abram, right? And honestly, Abram, from and from what I've seen, probably has the best double mug. The way he's running it is really effective. And see, there's that man coverage. He's running a lot of shaded down man coverage, too. And just trying to get that four man to get in. Good read there on the crosser. All right, we got first and ten. Uh, situationally, if 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 Fancy takes three, that's not a bat. Like we're starting to run. Abram's starting to run slowly out of time. He's still got time, but it's it's certainly like this is do or die for Abram. Like he's expending every resource to try to get a stop, and. Fancy's in a situation, just game management wise, he can score, he can settle for three, and it's not going to be the end of the world. You really want seven, of course, but but three is not the end of the world. He lo every single time, I'm pretty much, and and this is another little tip about Fancy in general. Pretty much every single time Fancy has been in this situation, he's gone to this trip side, and that's the combo I like right there. Look what he's running. I love that combo. And tight end just can't win. That's the problem with the post routes this year. The post routes are just not very good. Post routes just don't they just don't beat man like they used to. That's why I feel like the stemmed in routes are better. Red zone goal lines, but every time he's been in that 20 and in, he's gone to that trip side and flex, that combo. It's been the same combo every single time. Situationally here, we're gonna get in a inside the five. Inside the five, hardest place to score in the game. And what are we gonna try to do? He's gonna get in this single back wing tight. And he's gonna be running some stretch, running some duo, just trying to pound it in. See if he can get it in here. Not able to. Tried to truck, didn't work for him. Let's go second and goal. Same situation. Come out. This is I wanna say this is wide zone. It doesn't look like stretch to me. That's duo. That's duo. I think that's duo. Tries duo. So we've tried two runs. They both haven't worked. Now you probably see jet sweep. Well, I'm gonna go stretch, stretch, stretch left, stretch left. Duo, duo, duo. Oh, good run, duo. Truck, 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 truck. <laughs> Able to get in there. That's huge. It, it honestly wasn't wasn't pretty, but it was good. And um, there you go. That's a big touchdown drive from Fancy. And I, it, it's very clear to me that you know Fancy's. Like I said, he's he's one of the best passers every year. His defense is really. I think he spent a lot more time defensively trying to get defense right, which I totally get that. Um, we go block running back. You see Abram blocking the running back. I don't know why he's blocking the running back, honestly. And you see there's that shed. That's the shed I was talking about. When you can get sheds like that, you know, and that's just a flat-out shed. That's not – you can't block that. That's just Montez Sweat going crazy. You get stuff like that that's really good. Um, let's see the DB fire. And the DB fire, really, I mean, you watch. It just has not – he's not gotten a ton of sacks. It's not gotten a lot of pressure, pressure. Um, you watch Abrams blitz versus fancies. I mean, it's pretty clear. Let's see here. This, let's see if this is open now or in there. And look at these little tight windows. That was actually great defense by fancy. Abram had been going to that a lot. And another reason why he's going to that is because if fancy cover two is that right side, a lot of times that fade has potential to bomb that cover two, uh, depending on the hash mark. Oh, we got left hair, little speed out. And, I mean, it's pretty much been – got to actually break down these shells, but it's pretty much been roll coverage. And, and roll coverage and switch stick. And, and let's just look at this. Look at the shed. 
It's a Sin 3. That's a Sin 3. Fancy feels like he's about to win this game right here. This is at fourth down. This is a got to have it down. Or no, that was it. That was fourth down. Was that fourth down? That was fourth down, huh? Look at that. Fourth and five. Mmm. Parsons. And there it is. And now Fancy can just clock. And honestly, the way he's playing defense, honestly, you clock and kick your three. No run. That is run number one. Let's see run number two. <laughs> honestly, watch this tight end. I bet you this tight end's wide open. Look at that tight end wide open. I'm telling you, when people start throwing RPOs, this game's going to be crazy. Third and seven. Shift. Oh, he'll take this to the fourth. Put your fours up, boys. We're going to the fourth. And fancy if he if he manages this well, will win his first belt. Gun trips tight end offset. Difference between offset and flex. Tight end placement. Primary primary difference. Oh, everything's open. Everything's open. And that was that in route. There's that tight end in route. You see all the difference. So the post route, it doesn't beat man. In route beats man. Post route to me is is actually they they really did tear like did to, I I'm not thrilled with the post route this year. I wish we could go back to the old. Honestly, I wish we could go back to the old old way it was with with uh, the the hot routes. Like last year's hot routes better than this year's hot routes. My opinion. Put the step put leave stemming in the game. But the hot route system, they actually broke it. Tight open inside zone, that's kind of the main run we're seeing. Tight open, you see that kind of trying to kind of hit that crease. Not able to hit the crease. Third and 10. Uh, bunch. We should be taking this all the way down. Block the running back. Motion out streak. Okay, so normally this is going to be manned up, so now we're using a stemmed corner. Drag, crosser, nothing there. Take your sack. Yep, good. Take your sack. All right, there you go. So now we get this clock tick, 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 tick down. He's going to take his three. And then Abram is going to have basically very little time to come back. So if we look at this, if we look at this clock, you see he gets this all the way down to 248. So Abram has to score two touchdowns and two two point conversions in two minutes and 48 seconds. So, pretty tall task for him against this against this defense. And really, what what Fancy's defense doesn't do is it doesn't normally give up big plays. That's another real underrated component of this way of style of playing defense. His corners are backed off so much. The safeties are in good position for seam streaks. He doesn't really give up a lot of big plays. Um, but this is where, if you're Fancy, you don't want to be switch sticking and and putting yourself in a vulnerable position, right? So you want to be kind of, oh, that's, that was a pick, too. Man, he fell down. That's crazy. Watch watch what he did there. This is this is masterful. This is why Fancy's good. Like, the one playing the world right now. Look, he bites down to this, and then he's going to go back up and take this away. And if you watch his user, look at what happens. I don't know why he falls down. But, look, he falls down. Like, this is an interception. This is GG's game's over. He falls down. I don't this and this happens sometimes in this game. And that gives that big play up. That's exactly what you couldn't do if you were fancy in that situation, honestly. Like and I mean it goes from being a pick to being a sixty yard gain and red zone situation. Nice catch. Nice that was like a very favorable and that was very favorable to Abram right there. Second and one. Two minute warning. If you're Abram, you really want to score before that two-minute warning. Now you're kind of in a situation where you're going to have to score. The problem is it's so hard to score down here. You want to run the ball, but if you run the ball, the clock stop doesn't stop. So you're really just in a bad position clock management-wise. We're going to go with this quick toss here, crack toss play. This has been really – oh, QB sweep. I don't like calling that in that situation. Uh, QB sneak is – or QB sweep is so fluky. And now you get a fourth and five for the game. And uh, we'll see what happens here. This was fourth and five. This is where you got to get seven to stay alive. Street running back streak. Love the combo here. I don't know what we're doing on the right. Throw right at him. Catch it because you catch everything in this game. 
and now you got to get the two point conversion. Now the two, you pretty much have to get the two point conversion. If you don't get the two point conversion, the game is effectively over. So his two point conversion play for the money, dig return, flat, whip, whip gets a pick six, and this pick two is going to win the game. So situationally, now Fancy's up by twelve, which is two touchdowns. It's not a touchdown and a field goal. So last thing Abram is going to go to is to try to get this onside kick. He's not able to get the onside kick. And so now basically it's one first down, Fancy, and then we just clock the game. But Fancy has pretty much all but won the game. Goes to wing tight duo, gets blown up, and second and 13 situation. And we're going to go to, let's see what he goes to here for his clock, wing stack stretch. I actually love this run. I think this run's one of the better ones. He almost had it too. Just a good play by Abram to blow it up. It's very underrated how good these guys are at blowing up runs. Jet sweep. Oh, single back jet sweep. Not there. Third and 12. So fourth and 14, he is going to take all of Abrams' timeouts. And he's going to try to pass to get it. Okay, so, and I, I actually like this by fantasy situationally. You try to throw it, try to get it, because if you get a first down, the game's over. Looking for this corner right on the left. Look for that tight end. Oh, the tight end's completely open, and that's it. That's GG's. Guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Congrats to Fancy on his first belt. And um, if you guys want to learn any of the stuff we talked about, um, there, my ebooks are down in the description below. You become a member of our school community. Ten bucks, you get access to pretty much everything that we have over there and um, for both college and for Madden. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the breakdowns, and uh, we'll be doing more in the future.